was their week six in the NLL. This is the Lowdown. I am your host, as always, Jesse Thomas, where we look at all things that is the National Lacrosse League. Now, let's look back at week six. It was quite the week, especially if you're a member of the Rochester Nighthawks. You had a bounce back weekend. Uh, I spoke with Brad Self uh, earlier in the week, and he's featured in my Lowdown article, which is in the Peterborough Examiner. Check it out. There's a link here on the blog podcast as well. Um, but, uh, I mean, what a bounce back. I mean, the uh, Rochester Nighthawks, they start off 0-3. Everybody's wondering, scratching their heads, what's wrong? People are assuming, is there is there too much talent? You know, they pick up guys like uh, Dan Dawson, who's a top 10 all-time NLL scorer, and they pick up, you know, the, the best American to ever play the game, Casey Powell, and you've got guys out there, you know, Jamison, Vitarelli, Keogh, names like that, and people are wondering, uh, you know, is there too much talent? Are these guys not able to gel but uh, you know what Friday they uh, they bombed the Philadelphia Wings 20 to 10 in what was a 11 a.m. game there um, kind of going as a uh, elementary school promotion I guess you'd have it but they only had about 5,000 ga- uh, fans on hand for that game and Brad Self said it was kind of eerily quiet and, and a little strange and they weren't they aren't used to that in Philadelphia where they usually have a you know at least 10,000 fans and they're pretty rowdy but uh, yeah that was Friday afternoon and then uh, Saturday you obviously uh, if you were tuned into YouTube and the lacrosse network you would have seen the Rochester Nighthawks pummel uh, the Buffalo Bandits uh, 15-7 and now that is interesting because uh, that gives Rochester now a 3-3 three and three record and that's the exact same record that the Buffalo Bandits have in the East so we've got a two way tie for second place um but there was another game Friday night. Let's go back in time a bit again. And that was the Minnesota Swarm. They are a perfect 2-0 and at home this year after picking up a huge overtime victory against the Toronto Rock. Uh, 13-12 final it was. The Rock just never gave up. They were trailing, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> they were trailing and then they find a way to score with, you know, 0.5 seconds left at, at half and then they score again and late in the third with uh, just seconds to go and then uh, eventually they just couldn't hold on. It was a Swarm that did and and uh, one of their uh, transition players, well, they had about seven or eight transition goals, but it was Haas that had the game winner. You know, big boy, and he can really run. Um, what else we have? Oh, yeah, we had the Colorado Avalanche. They uh, they only scored six goals against uh, the Washington Stealth. The Stealth put up a, a big victory over Colorado at home, 13-6. to The Colorado Mammoth... Um, that was their lowest output, six goals since 2003, and this was the first time uh, this season that John Grant Jr. has been held off the score sheet. And you know what? The you know the Stealth needed that victory coming into that game. They had dropped three out of four, so they're sitting okay right now in the standings there in the uh, West. Uh, they're actually tied right now with Calgary, one of the hottest teams. But we'll look at the standings in a minute. Uh, y- you look back to, uh, you know, that Buffalo game with Rochester. You know, Buffalo, I mean, they're without John Tavares. He's got that lower body injury, um, and he's even doubtful for this weekend. Um, the other game we haven't mentioned yet was probably the best game of the weekend. It was the Battle of Alberta, uh, which Calgary now owns. They uh, took a 9-8 victory there at home. It was Curtis Dixon uh, who played an incredible game, scoring three of his four goals in the fourth quarter including uh, the game winner with under 30 seconds to go and uh, Calgary looking looking hot they've got that four game win streak now going into Toronto Friday night and then they're back in Minnesota on Saturday so it, it should be uh, a fantastic uh, weekend of course it's going to be a fantastic weekend uh, it is the National Lacrosse League but why don't we do that well, let's uh, let's look at the standings here shall we the Toronto Rock are in the uh, top spot in the east they've got that five and two record looking really strong uh we mentioned that their buffalo and rochester are tied for second with a three and three record and they've got philadelphia wings they're sitting at two and three right now they've been struggling a little bit to find some offense and um so somebody who's not is the Rochester Nighthawks. Look out for them now in the East, the defending champions. They're they're rolling. They've got some chemistry. And if uh, we move over to the West standings, we've got the Calgary Nut Roughnecks uh, right now, that 4-2 and two record. We mentioned the, they've gone on a four-game win streak since starting the season 0-2. Oh and, um, and then with them, with a 4-3 and three record, is the Washington Stealth. And then we've got Colorado 2-3, and three, uh, Minnesota equally with that record 2-3. and three. And then right now in last place, uh, in the league and in the West is the Edmonton Rush. 